finger down, watch your mouth edition. Put a finger down if you've ever raised your voice at a family member. Put a finger down if you've ever made an excuse to get out of something. Put a finger down if you've ever made a joke that you didn't need to make. Put a finger down if you've ever been snippy with someone. And put a finger down if you've ever refused to say sorry. Now put your fingers back up. Hey, we forgive you. Just watch your mouth because you've got a lot of good things to say. Hello, welcome to MCC. I'm the online campus pastor. My name is Drew Crisp. I do want to welcome you to our service. It's going to be great. We're in the book of James. It's a series called TikTok. Uh, so please, if you wouldn't mind, if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, uh, share this service with your friends and your family. Let them know that they are invited to join us as well. Um, if you would, please chime in on the chat. There are online hosts who would love to talk with you. In fact, I got a quick question for you. Uh, name a gift that you have received or given on Father's Day. Um, here's the deal. Happy Father's Day. It's Father's Day. And we've all, as fathers, been given gifts or we've given them. And maybe one stands out. Just kind of chime in in the chat. I'll share one with you. Uh, my son, Lachlan, gave me a tie completely of M&Ms one time. It was like the bag in the shape of a tie. They were delicious and I loved it. It was fantastic. But what are the gifts that you have given or received? I'd love to hear about that. We're going to be taking communion together, so go ahead and gather the elements of communion, uh, the bread and the juice. Uh, gather those together because we will be celebrating uh, that together later on in our service. It uh, looks like we're just about ready. Let me leave you with a good old dad joke. Are you ready for it? Why did the broom miss his appointment? He overswept. All right, let's go church. Let's worship. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God above all gods, to the Lord above all lords. My friend, His love endures forever. And we have come to give thanks to the one who has done great wonders with His love, which endures forever. Our God is worthy of our praise. God, you are great, and our soul sings and rejoices in your praises today, Lord God. Let us bow at his feet, he has done great things. See what our Savior has done, see how his love overcomes. Yes, he has done great things. You have, he has done great things. Oh, hero of heaven. You conquered the grave, you free every captive and break every chain, oh God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awaken the light, oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high, oh God, you have done great things. 
and you break every chain, oh God. You have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awaken to life, oh Jesus. Our Savior, your name lifted high, oh God. You have done great things. You have done great things. to do it again the great works of his hand and of his love he promises to do it again in our lives and God is faithful my friend let's call upon him let's pray and ask that his spirit would lead and guide and direct us fullness of eternal promise Stirring in your sons and daughters Earth revealing heaven's wonder Spirit come Spirit come What you spoke is now unfolding All your children shall behold it. Dreams awaken in this moment. So, Spirit, come. Spirit, come. Pour it out. Let your love run. Here and now. Let your glory Pour it out, let your love run over Here and now, let your glory fill this house Now the world awaits your presence And this power is with We will rise to be your witness Spirit come Spirit come And pour it out Let your love run over Here and now Let your glory fill this house Pour it out Let your love run over where we are right now, Lord God, we are calling upon the name of Jesus that you would fill this house. Maybe the house that we've gathered in with our families or our friends or wherever we are, Lord God, maybe we're alone, but Lord, we know that the house that we are calling upon you to fill is this life, this temple, this body of the Holy Spirit dwell in us.
power is within us and we will rise to be your witness spirit come spirit come belong to you, our great and mighty King. Who I was will hardly be remembered because who you are has overcome. Now I am entirely dependent upon who you are and all you've done. Death can hold my sin and shame over me anymore. Cause I'm washed in your blood and I'm forgiven by your royal decree. I'm a of our God, that while he has begun in each of us, he will, he will continue and complete until the day of 
Christ Jesus. Thank you, God, for these truths today of how wonderful you are, of how great you are, Lord God, of how you are our strength and how you are pouring into us, Lord God. We know that you desire to use us, Lord. And we thank you for your love that sets us free, that endures forever, and that brings hope to those around us. God, just bless the reading of your word into our lives today. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. A three-legged dog walked into a bar and said, I'm looking for the man who shot my paw. Did you hear about the fire at the circus? It was intense. Interesting. They say there's 26 letters in the English alphabet. I can only remember 25. I don't know why. That's interesting. A girl I liked in high school only knew four vowels. She didn't even know I existed. When you know the sky's the limit And the jokes go on and on When you look to see who's laughing And dad's the only one You know that's dad, that's dad You know it You know that's dad, that's dad You know it You know that's dad, that's dad And we love him So with all those dads who watch watching right now Say happy Father's Day to you, dad reading a book on anti-gravity. I can't put it down. Do you know what Beethoven's favorite fruit was? A banana na na I bought some shoes from a drug dealer. I'm not sure what he laced them with, but I've been tripping all day. Is that wig free, or do I have to pay? When you try to take them serious, and the jokes go on and on The moment got mysterious, and left you feeling dumb You know that's dead, and that's dead, you know it You know that's dead, and that's dead, you know it You know you're dead, and you're dead, and you know it And with all those dads who are watching right now Say happy Father's Day to you, Dad I'm glad that dads are finally getting the recognition they deserve. I mean, we've got our own genre of jokes and they're amazing. I mean, the kind of jokes that just make you laugh for days. So we got dad jokes, we've got dad hats, pretty awesome hats, and we're even celebrating the dad bod these days. I mean, dads have really got it going on. We've made this great resurgence in the dad realm. Way to go, dads. You know, though, it is, it is good to, to celebrate dads because, you know, fathers are, are worth celebrating. And we have a heavenly father that we gather together to, to worship and celebrate and, and look to. And as we think about that in this study of the book of James that we're in right now, this TikTok message series, we think about how our father is eternal. And our eternal father wants to express his eternal love and the eternal nature of his family to us. And he gives that in the scriptures. He gives that in the words that he hands to us. And so our memory verse for this series we're in is found in James chapter four, verse 14. I, I want you to hear these words, maybe even say them with me. It says, why you do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Okay, these are words that are given to us from a heavenly father, one who has an eternal perspective. And he's telling us, hey guys, I can see some things you can't. Okay, you're in this TikTok, right? This this moment, this this created space of time where you are, are very much defined by it. He goes, but I have something different for you. I have an eternal perspective. He's an eternal father with an eternal kingdom and he invites us to be adopted children in his eternal family. And he says, so you can get all hung up in the, the todays and the ticks and the talks and, and every second that passes, but you don't even know what'll happen tomorrow. 
I mean, the time and space that we're living in right now ought to, ought to clearly communicate that to us. I mean, if we thought we could have predicted this and what's happening, you know, today or yesterday or what's definitely going to happen tomorrow, well, we don't know. I mean, what is our lives? Uh, they're but a mist. There's, here they are, and then they're gone. But we are eternal creations, created to not only live eternally, but to live for eternity and to do that even in this created space of time. And so as we do that, our, our heavenly father has some eternal words of wisdom for us. And, and the thing about our, our God father, our father God is, is he has good words. Now, maybe your earthly father, I'm not sure what your relationship with him was like. Maybe you just kind of have a, a kind of cultural view of dads. If we were to, to take dads, most of us in our common cultural view of dads would say dads are, are men of few words. Like dads have a pretty limited vocabulary. It goes to things like stop, no, calm down, quiet, don't make me pull this car over. Do I look like I'm made of money? Were you raised in a barn? And ask your mother. That pretty much sums up the whole dad vocabulary as far as our cultural understanding of it. But our heavenly father, he's got much more than that for us. He's got words that um, are, are so impactful and good. And so as we, as we hear from him, I hope that we will, will listen as children who are listening to a good father and what he has to say for us. And so as we dig into James chapter three, the first thing I would point out to us is that words have power. They have power to build and they also have power to destroy. And we need to recognize and understand that, that words matter and words have power. And God cares about the words we use because they're a reflection of our father. What we say is a reflection of, of who our father is and what he's saying to us. So the more we listen to our heavenly father and the words that he gives us, the more that we'll hear from him and then his words will come out of us. And our, our, our God, our father God, his, his words build, he creates with his words. Everything was spoken into existence. In the beginning, it, it was formless and void and God spoke and it was. Our God is creative with his words. He builds with his words. He makes new with his words. And so as children of God, as we hear his words and his words come into us, his words move out of us and his words are words of love and words that build up, not destroy. And so we look at the scripture there in James chapter three, verse one, it says, not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly we all stumble in many ways. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect, able to keep their whole body in check. Okay, so here's the thing about words. Words really reveal who we are. And our mouths oftentimes get us into trouble. And whether it's the spoken word or the written word, because this whole social media phenomenon is really revealing about what's going on inside of us. It's out of the overflow of the heart that words come out. So what's in here is gonna come out of here or even as we type on a keyboard. And so we mess that up sometimes. Uh, the problem with, uh, certainly with social media or one uh, problem, I don't know, benefit, I'm not sure which, is a lot of times those things are immortalized. You can screenshot them, you can keep them and they'll stay with you forever. Uh, spoken words sometimes, uh, we may um, just kind of sweep those under the rug and think, oh, well, you know what? That's not really what I meant. Or we can blow them off or, or say they didn't really matter. But listen, all these words matter. They absolutely matter. And so if we can hear from our heavenly father what he's really saying to us, then we can express these same things to others. And it always matters. Even if we think we already know and understand, and maybe these things are, are just a given. Uh, for instance, I remember um, before moving to New Hampshire 10 years ago, um, my dad one time, uh, the church that, that he and my mom are part of, uh, they were having a special event where they had a former NFL football player who was coming in to speak to uh, the men of the church. And my dad asked me if I would go with him, which it was unusual for him to ask me to do something like this. And I was like, well, absolutely, dad, I'd be happy to go with you. And so we went and uh, this gentleman who was speaking, he ran a ministry that was a prison ministry. And so he was speaking out of his experience over the last several decades of working in prisons with men. And one of the things he shared was uh, that there was a common experience with the men in prison that most of them did not have any kind of a healthy father figure in their lives. 
And so he was saying, okay, one of the works that he was doing in ministry was to help raise up fathers to be father figures, whether they were the biological fathers or, or substitutions for that, um, to, to be fathers for people um, and raise up a culture of that because he felt like that would be preventative and you know, so much of what was being experienced in the prison system. And so we were listening to him. And one of the things he said was, it's so important that fathers say certain words to their children. And he laid it out like this. He says, this is what's so important. It's so important that a father would say to his son, you're my boy, you're a good boy, and I love you. And as he expressed that, it was like, he just kind of let that sit there. You're my boy, you're my boy. You belong to me, you're, you're mine, I'm responsible for you and, and I claim you and, and I don't disown you. You're my boy and you're a good boy and I love you. And we, we listened to that in that space. And then he went on and was talking about some other things. And then afterwards there was a little social time and some food. And, and after we'd been there for a few hours, we went out to the parking lot and got in the truck. Before my dad put the truck in reverse, he looked at me and says, I need to tell you something. I said, what's that? And then he looked me right in the eyes and he said, you're my boy. And I, right, I knew what was coming. I mean, I, I knew it. I knew what he was doing. I, I knew we had just heard this, but he said it to me, you're, you're my boy. And he goes, you're a good boy. And I love you. There was never any doubt in my mind. My dad has, has been a wonderful earthly father and expressed in words to me many times who I am to him and that he loves me. And even though I knew it was coming and I knew we had just heard it, I will never forget that moment to hear him just say, hey, you're, you're my boy. You're a good boy. I love you. I said, thanks, dad. And several times, you know, over the last decade, my, my dad has said that to me, just out of the blue. I'd be on the phone and go, oh, hey, one more thing. You're my boy. You're a good boy. And I love you. I'm like, yeah. There's something really special about understanding who we are and the, and the power of words. These, these words have power. And so in the scripture here, What's written to us is like, hey, not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. Like these words, they really matter. We stumble in many ways and, and anyone who never uh, is at fault in what they say is perfect, able to keep their whole body in check. Well, all right, well, wait a minute. Sometimes I think that we're just, we go ahead and resolve ourselves to th- these lives of imperfection. But in Matthew chapter five, verse 48, Jesus says these words, be perfect therefore as your heavenly father is perfect. There is a call to perfection in the image of who our heavenly father is, that he is perfect and we are to be perfect as he is perfect because we are created in his image. And then through Jesus, we are recreated in his image. So go ahead and let that new identity come out of you. We're all, we're all teachers. I mean, I don't think there's any avoiding that. We may not have the formal title of teachers and in the context that James was writing, he was certainly writing to a culture that elevated teachers above many others. And it would be a position of power and some uh, esteem. There'd be recognition in that. So it was a desirable thing. He's like, you should probably be careful with that. He said, because the words we speak are are very important. Now, if you have a relationship with Jesus and you're wanting to help others, you're wanting to share God's love and help others into a relationship with him, even like in the context of your home, if you're a parent and, and you are, you're teaching, you're raising up, you're instructing, these words are, are so important and so uh, crucial. So we wanna use our words. So if we're gonna use our words, that means there's an intentionality with our words. We understand the power of words. So we're gonna be very intentional with them. We're gonna use them, not let them use us. I mean, that's one of the things I talk about like with social media is there's all these words out there and people are just putting words out, words out, words out. If you don't know what you're doing on social media, like you don't have a social media strategy, you're not on there intentionally using your words to glorify and honor God or for something else, then you need to understand you're being used by social media. Even if you do have a strategy, you are being used. And so you wanna be aware of that and pay attention to that. So we're gonna use our words. So in thinking about that, we're gonna use them sparingly. 
We're not just, sometimes we, we get so free with words. We're just firing off, firing off, firing off, firing off. And man, it causes a lot of damage. There, it, we're, we're too wordy. We're, there's too many words. It's instead of using them sparingly and being wise with that and using them to build there, it's just causing destruction. Um, we need to use them cautiously. Like not just saying, you know, the first thing that pops in our head or, 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 or just spouting off, but to be cautious to, okay, well, I'm gonna be respectful. I'm gonna be cautious because I don't wanna do damage. I want to build up, not destroy. And so I'm gonna be cautious with those. We also wanna use them humbly. Sometimes our, our words are, are so arrogant. I mean, like it's so easy in the world that we live in to uh, instantly believe, well, I'm the expert and I know all things and that's a dumb decision and that's a stupid move and only a moron would do that because after all, I'm, I'm the pinnacle of all existence. Oh, my brothers and sisters, whenever I do this, it's like, ooh, ooh, wait a minute, okay. There's probably information I don't have access to. There's other factors at play. I, I'm certainly not being humble here. I'm not not being gracious. And then also we want to use them constructively to build up, to lift up, to encourage, to add courage to to people, to, to build them up and encourage them to follow Jesus and look to him and hear from him. That's that's the best way we could ever teach anyone, anybody. And so a part of that is we think about using words constructively and, and humbly and cautiously and sparingly is sometimes what we say may be right. It may be the right thing to say, but we should also pay attention and really listen to God and say, am I saying the right thing at the right time in the right way in the right place? I mean, those things are important. And so as we use our words, we want to use them sparingly, cautiously, humbly, and constructively to build others up. Because if we're teaching with our words, and we always are, that bad teaching can do a lot of damage and destroy a lot of things. All right, next, as we continue in James 3, is words have consequences. Words have consequences consequences. So uh, when our our words go out, there's going to be consequences. Sometimes the consequences are really good. Sometimes the consequences are really bad. Sometimes we don't even understand or or, uh, are even able to evaluate the consequences for quite some time, but there's always consequences to them. Verse three says, when we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue is also a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire and is itself set on fire by hell. Whoa. I mean, there's some really strong language here in the book of James regarding the words that we speak. Out of this, out of this mouth, it produces great consequences. And so if, I, if we have uncontrolled tongues, it's gonna lead to out of control lives. Always does. Words have come out of here that I would have given anything to bring back in, but I can't, they're out. They've come out, they've been spoken. And those uncontrolled words coming out of the overflow of a, of a damaged heart, they cause damage to others. And there's consequences to that. There can also be good consequences, but we need to be aware of this. And so there are some conversational consequences. The, the words we speak have consequences. First of all, they can steer our lives. So our words, you know, will, will steer our lives. They'll, they'll, you know, mark out the direction that we're going to go. It, it's pretty wild, you know, like, like even talking to my kids and saying, hey, the things that you put on social media, they, they can actually steer your life. I mean, we're getting to see it, you know, in a more practical way sometimes right now because of social media to say, you know what, you, you post one thing right now and it might be a mistake. It, it might've been an, an error. It might've just been poor judgment, but you, you say these things, it's there. 
And it can come back and it can have severe consequences and steer your whole life. It'll lead you into the actions and activities that you didn't really intend. Words can also uh, start fires. Uh, they, they, they start, uh, think about this just for a moment. Yeah. You ever experience somebody using um, insightful language? Uh, not insightful, but inciting, like to incite, to, to get there to be a drama or a fight or to, to have, this happens at my, our dinner table all the time. Uh, like we'll, we'll, we'll be having dinner and maybe the conversation, one of the kids like uh, needed to be corrected on something, something small, like, hey, you know, could you please, you forgot to unload the dishwasher. We asked you to do that. Could you, could you please do that? And then instead of the, the child just saying, oh yeah, sorry. Um, but uh, you know, my sister missed curfew last night. And it's like, whoa, 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 hey, what are we doing, right? It's like, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna find somebody who was, who was maybe worse and we're gonna get that on, on that person. It happens in the family dynamic all the time, but it certainly happens within our, our world at large. Our, our language is like starting a fire. Like, hey, let's, let's start a fire over here. Let's, let's get that thing really, really burning and really blazing. And then instead of uh, helping, you know, put out the fire, we're throwing fuel on the fire with our words, trying to stir people up even more, trying to make them even more angry and more upset. And then words can also uh, scorch the whole body. They, they impact uh, the whole of our being. It's a, it's a holistic experience. It's not like we can separate them out and say, oh, it's just words. Well, it's not just words. It's never just words. Words are a reflection of the heart and they impact everything we do. The, the whole of our being, the whole course of one's life is set on fire. And so in that example in the scripture there, we see you know, the, the rudder, it steers the ship, but ultimately there's a captain who's controlling the rudder. But if the captain is not paying attention to that and isn't really guiding that and being cautious and wise and, and humble uh, with the words, then that ship is going to go off course very quickly. And our words will do that to us. They'll take us off course so fast. And it says that it is itself set on fire by hell. And so the, the thought here is, okay, either, either hell in and of itself is the origin of our hellish speech, our evil speaking, it could have its origins, you know, straight from, the, straight from the pit of hell. You know, Satan is a deceiver. He's a liar. He is turning people against them and, and he's a divider. God's a multiplier. Satan's a divider. I want you to hear that. So God is a multiplier. He wants to build and grow his kingdom and, and connect people and bring them together. Satan is always dividing, always dividing. Go back to the, the garden. Uh, I mean, one of the things that Satan in his first temptation is doing, he's trying to divide and separate Adam from Eve and Adam and Eve from God. He is a divider. And when our language is divisive, it is coming straight from the pit of hell. So it, it could have its origins there, uh, but ultimately it will always end up there. It's always pushing and leading there. When our speech is evil, and it's anti-Christ and against God. And it's not full of love and grace and compassion and mercy and gentleness and self-control and faithfulness. Well, then it's going to have its destination in, the, in hell itself. That's where it leads. And so pay attention to that. Um, our words reveal our character. So as we speak, it is an overflow of the heart and it reveals uh, what is, is going on in here. It reveals our character. It reveals our identity. Now, here's the deal. Like you can have a relationship with Jesus and have this new identity in him. And that new identity as a child of God is, is to be expressed and to be spoken and, and to be lived out. But there's this old self that has been crucified with Christ Jesus. And he's, he's taken care of that. It's been put to death. The, that sinful nature has been taken care of. But we have a tendency to try to resurrect that and to live out of that old identity instead of the new identity. And so our words will reveal our character. It, it shows like, like who we are. Verse seven there of James three says, all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind, but no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. With the tongue, we praise our Lord and Father and with it, we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. 
Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. This is, I think, one of the most challenging and heartbreaking uh, things about our words is they they reveal our character. And sometimes our our character is duplicitous. It's double-minded. There's two things that are happening there. And we can say all day long, well, uh, I'm a child of God and I want to exalt and worship my father. I want to praise him, but I want to curse people. It doesn't work. I see, as we're saying, okay, I have a relationship with God and there's this God who so loved the world that he would send his one and only son, Jesus, to come and die for the world, to save the world. And now he's left his church here to share his love in this world. And we're running around and we're cursing people instead of blessing them with the very words of God. It's like the worst. And we have the opportunity to repent repent, to change our minds, to say no more. I, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to live that way. I, I'm going to be consistent and steady. And you know what? Look, if you want to curse people, then, then curse them all the time. Just be consistent with it. At least we'll know what we're dealing with. It's this bait and switch thing where I love Jesus and I'm for God and, and I'm, a, I'm in the family of God. And I'm going to follow Jesus, but I hate you. What? This doesn't make sense. This, this doesn't, this doesn't line, this is, this is destroying. And it's confusing. And then when it's, my goodness, not only like tolerated, but celebrated within what we think is the family of God, it's disgusting. I mean, it really, it's just, it, it's like this in the sense that it, it ought to make us want to vomit because something's not right. It's, it's poison. To, to, to celebrate that and go, oh yeah, oh, 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 oh boy, we're, we're big, tough. Whoa, look at us. Really? Like, like where, where's Jesus and, and that? Where's his love and that? Where's his grace? Where, how, are, how are we communicating um, the reality of who like, God is? and his great love for us and that. It's really, really confusing. And so these words that reveal our character, I like the, the imagery of the forked tongue, uh, the forked tongue, the split tongue. Like it's got two prongs coming out of it, which is interesting. Like it, when we think of that, usually we think of snakes. You know, they have the, the forked tongue, the split, the split tongue. So you go back to the garden, you have the serpent is the deceiver. And when our tongues are split, then we become deceivers, very much tools of the evil one. And so the forked tongue, um, it it praises God, but curses people. Praise God, curse people. Doesn't doesn't work. Another thing the forked tongue does is it publicly respects, but privately shames. And so it talks behind people's backs. I don't know if you've ever experienced it. I will tell you this right now. If, 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 you, if you know a gossip, somebody who gossips, I guarantee you that person is gossiping about you. And, and if, I mean, this is just kind of the nature of things. If, and if you talk behind people's backs, I, I would just, I would hope people would understand that that's something that we would tend to do everywhere. And it's duplicitous. It's a forked tongue. It's, it's saying one thing in one venue, but then saying another, uh, a different thing in another venue. And it's so confusing and it, it's messed up and it does damage in our world. And then it is also, it publicly shames, but privately envies. Publicly shames. So it says, well, that's bad or that's not good, but privately it's, it's really envious. So maybe even the only reason it, it's shaming that thing or calling that thing out is that, it's envious of whatever it is. And it, it just reveals a, a problem in the heart because out of the heart we speak and out of the heart is this wellspring of life. And here's what God wants to do. He wants us to be this living water 
that, that is flowing into us. So even as we pray for one, God, please give me one person to share your love with. We're saying, yes, God, I need your love. I'm desperate for your love. I can't share what I don't have. God, please give me one person to share your love with. And we're opening up ourselves to receive God's love so that God's love can then move through us to come in and to come out. And we become these conduits of God's love. But one of the things that God's love does is it flushes the system. It removes the, the guilt, it removes the, the shame, it removes the sin, it washes over us and, and makes us new. And so now his love can then be expressed through us with a purity. I mean, this is the reason for holy living, for righteousness, right living, being holy, set apart, that God has a special purpose for us, that his love would move through his church and not be polluted any longer. Righteousness, right living to say, okay, God, uh, how do you want me to live so that this, this love that is moving through me is not polluted so that your love can move through me and people can be refreshed. Guys, if, if as the church, if you and me, if people are not being refreshed by our words, there's a problem with our hearts. There's a problem because we, we have the most refreshing, reviving, life-giving words imaginable that we can share. And those words reveal our character and then words express wisdom. They express wisdom. It's one thing to, to have wisdom, but if we never share the wisdom, like if we don't live this out and express it and teach and, and give it to others, then we're really missing out. They, they express wisdom from God. He gives it to us and he gives us the words to express it. Verse 13 says, who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from the Father, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder in every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from, the, from heaven is first of all, pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. Now, all of us with our words are expressing some kind of wisdom. For some, it's this worldly wisdom, how to get ahead, how to achieve, how to win, how to dominate, how to be the big shot. And it, it's me-centered, it's selfish, it, it's full of conceit and vanity, selfish ambition, and oh, it's dark, it's demonic. And it throws everything into disorder. It pits people against each other. It divides because it's a tool of the enemy. And then you have this wisdom that comes from God. And I love what it says about it, that it's peace loving. First of all, it's pure. It's not impure, but it's, it, it's pure coming out of us. And it's peace loving so that we're called to be peacemakers, as it says there, who sow peace and reap a harvest of righteousness. It's considered and submissive and full of mercy and, and it produces this good fruit. It's impartial and sincere. Just think about those words. This is the wisdom that, that God gives us. And I know it's not the wisdom of this world. I know it's not the wisdom that is celebrated in this world. I know it's not uh, the wisdom that is so easy to spew. I know that, but it's the wisdom of God and peacemakers. That's what we're called to be. Do you know that? We're called to, to multiply the family of God, that there would be a harvest of righteousness, N not just me as an individual, but that my life would produce a harvest of righteousness, that it would yield a crop 30, 60, 100 times what was shown. That's what we do when we pray for one. God, please give me one person to share your God's love with. Well, one becomes two, two becomes four, four becomes eight, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, 1024, let's go. And the family of God gets bigger 
as we have peace with God, then that peace that he has made in our hearts with him is able to come out of our mouths so that we can invite others to enjoy peace with their father. With a dad who loves them. Do you know that? You're a child of God. You're not an accident. You're an on purpose. You are made in his image and he has new life for you where you can be recreated through a relationship with Jesus to be an adopted child in his kingdom. And I want you to hear right now. I mean, hear, I mean, listen close. Maybe even close your eyes and just hear from the father. This is what he says. You are my child. Hear him. He says, you are my child and you are a good child and I love you. Do you hear him? You are my child. You are a good child and I love you. This is who our father declares that you, that we are his precious children. And he declares by his work and his authority that we are good. That the old is gone, the new has come. And we are the objects of his love. And how will you respond to the love like that of a father? Why, well, I, I, as a dad, I, I learned a cool lesson from my youngest. You know, my dad said to me, you're my boy. You're a good boy. And I love you. So I started saying that to my kids sometimes and got into a pattern of just about every day with my youngest, Inslee, waiting for the bus of saying that to her. I just say, hey. She go, yeah, dad. I'd say, you're my girl. You're a good girl. And I love you. But instead of just saying this, she started to respond. I would look at her and go, hey. She'd go, yeah, dad, you're my girl. And she'd smile and go, you're my dad. I'd say, you're a good girl. And she'd go, you're a good dad. I'd say, I love you. She'd say, I love you. Oh. I'll tell you that the heart of this father just beats for that. And I think that's in line with the heart of our heavenly father. Our worship is a response to his love. We love because he first loved us. So I want you to hear these amazing words. He says, you're my child. You're a good child and I love you. But would you respond when he says, you're my child, would you say, you're my dad? When he says, you're a good child, would you say, you're a good dad? When he says, I love you, will you say, I love you? Let's try right now. God says to you and me, you're my child. You're my dad. You're a good child. You are good. I love you. I love you. I love you. Let's spend this time right now with our, our Father who has soul-shaping, heart-changing, reconstructing words of eternity to pour into us that we can reflect back to Him and that will overflow out of our hearts to others. Let's meet with that dad right now.
the hopeless have found their hope the orphans now have their home all that was lost has found its place in you You lift our weary head You make us strong instead You took these rags and made us beautiful For all that you've done we will pour out our love This will be our anthem song Jesus we love you oh how we love you you are the one our, our hearts adore Jesus we love you Oh, how we love you. You are the one our hearts adore, hearts adore. Jesus, we love you. Oh, oh how we love you. You are the one now our hearts adore Jesus we love you oh how we love you you are the one now our hearts So we just heard all about taming the tongue and it's incredible that our tongues can bless but they can also curse. So it's just a reminder that man how we speak and how we live is an action and we want to live for Christ and we remember this moment of how he lived that he sacrificed everything for you and me. So let's take this bread right now and let's eat remembering that sacrifice. And this cup is for you and me. It's a, it's a gift of life. And the blood that was shed redeems us. So let's drink right now to the King. Father, we thank you for just the sacrifice that you've given us and how we can live in this hope and live in this freedom now that the old is gone and we're a new creation in, in you, Father. Let us be tamed to our tongue that, Father, we want goodness and wholeness to come out of it. We want to encourage, not, not, not curse. So thank you for the sacrifice and thank you for this hope and the salvation that we have in you, Jesus. In that name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us. My name is Jason Rose. I'm the Bedford Campus Pastor. And I want to wish all the fathers out there happy Father's Day. And here's my joke. Uh, what do you call a cow with no legs? Ground beef. There you go. That's a free one. But we want you to take some time and fill out the Connect card. If you're new, that is the best way to connect with us through the app or uh, through the Connect card right there. Uh, anytime during this that you need someone to talk to, we have hosts that would love to pray with you right now. And go ahead and fill in the chat. God tells us in his word to worship him by giving financially. So at MCC, we want to say thank you for just the share the love of how you guys stepped up and donated all those supplies. And we want to give God obediently in this way through giving and that moves through connecting his people to him and to other people and to his mission. There are several ways to give here at MCC. The first is you can just text the word give MCC to 77977. You can set up a reoccurring gift through the app or website at manchesterchristian.com backslash give or you can mail your check to 1308 Wellington Road Manchester New Hampshire 03104 let's take some time and pray over these gifts 
and how God is using Share the Love to reach people. Father, we thank you for these gifts that are given, Father, that it's advancing your kingdom. And we're glad that we get to be a part of it. And we thank you for all those who gave during Share the Love of donating these needed supplies. Father, we are so encouraged and so ready to keep praying for one. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In just a moment, we're going to continue in worship and song. But before I do, I, I don't want to miss this. If there's anyone here today online that you want to accept Jesus as your Savior, please go ahead and message in in the chat. There's going to be a phone number that you can call. I would love to talk with you and share the good news of Jesus with you. At this time, we're going to continue to sing and rejoice in the Lord because today's the day he's made. Happy Father's Day, everyone. Let's sing this out together. I was buried beneath my shame. can carry that kind of weight you see it was my tomb till I met I was breathing but not alive all my failures I tried Hide. It was my tomb till I met you. See, you called my name.
together to worship and to praise you, to learn of your word, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for filling us with your Holy Spirit. May we just walk forward, Lord God, in advancing your kingdom, for your glory, for the hope of those around us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. My friend, you have a great week as you go with the Lord God Almighty.